My name is Basil Khalil. I am the director of Ave Maria. It's a short film about a convent of nuns in the middle of the West Bank. It's a Friday evening, the Sabbath is coming in, and a religious Jewish family breaks down in front of the convent, rushing home before the Sabbath starts. They need the help of the nuns, but they can't use any machinery to call for help. And the nuns have taken a vow of silence, and they can't speak in the phone to help them. So they need to find a way to help each other. This is what the film is about. Thank you so much for that, sir. Um, now, how did you come up with the whole concept for the movie? Like, uh, to inculcate both the sides and make a sort of humorous, but at the same time very serious uh, movie? Brought up in Nazareth. It's a Palestinian city in the north of uh, Palestine 48 within Israel. And next to, next to us was, the, was a Carmelite convent a massive building with high walls and they had seven nuns living in there who have taken a vow of silence they don't speak except for one hour a day and uh, that kind of sparked my curiosity how do these people live these strict rules because in Palestine you're born instantly into a religion you you have to take sides you don't choose it but what you do choose is the level of, of extremism or, or the level of rules extra on top and so I wanted to make a story where that could happen any day. You've got two sides who've taken an extreme level of their religious rules. They're stuck with each other. They have to bend the rules so they can help each other to get rid of each other. Because you've got this nuns who don't speak, it's a quiet convent. And you've got this Israeli family who break down and they're having squabbles within. And so they're making a lot of noise. They want to go home but they need the nuns. The nuns want to go back to their quiet routine um, so they need these Israelis to leave and so they have to break these rules um, of what they would consider life and death but, it, but in the end they see that life goes on and maybe the rules you know, were not that, that important. So it is, the message is question the rules you've taken upon yourself. Are they worth it? If they are, that's good. But always question. You've had a few locations, like which are uh, some of them in Palestine and you know Israel. So how difficult were what were the challenges that came up with shooting in these places? So the interiors were all um, like private residences, or one of it was in a church. That was easy. The exterior filming, we had to film in a convent. It was the only option. I didn't like any other location. And it was a deserted convent on the border between the West Bank and Jordan. But it's controlled by the Israeli army. It's like a minefield. So it stopped people from, like, for them to stop people from Jordan or Arab countries sneaking into Israel through the West Bank. So we needed permission from the Israeli army. And so we had a, a, a Jewish uh, uh, production assistant who spoke perfect uh, Hebrew to contact the army. And they allowed him to to film for a day um, normally a shooting day is about 11 hours and we had only six hours so we had to rush and i was like re we were really lucky and i was so happy that we had this location it was so beautiful middle of the desert exactly what i imagined and we didn't have any lunch break no coffee breaks we just film 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 me like one or two takes and in the last shot of the film was the last shot of the day the sun was setting and the soldiers were all behind us, like nagging us, come on, you got five minutes, you got to leave now. They're shutting down the border. And we got lucky, we literally filmed it last moment. And uh, now finally your movie is shortlisted for an Oscar. How does it feel like? Oh, you know, it feels ridiculous. You know, this time last year I was editing the film, not knowing what's going to happen. Will they like it? Maybe I'm a bad director and nobody will want to watch it. And you know I started applying to festivals in December January February I get getting rejections and then I was starting okay maybe I should get a day job I'm not sure this is gonna be right and then we got accepted into Cannes Film Festival and that was like wow I can't believe it and then we went to another 50 festivals over the last six months in 27 countries and won awards and then now the Oscar uh, uh, shortlist, they, so they shortlist 10 out of which five they'll nominate. So we've got like we're 50% reaching the Oscars. Oh my god, you know. And I got the news when I was at Brussels airport, like a couple of days after the Paris attacks. And I was on my phone and I was shaking and I was going through security and I was sweating. And then there was a soldier with a gun standing next to me, a Belgian soldier. And I was like this Arab guy shaking and sweating through security. This is not a good sign. <laughs> but nonetheless, all the best, sir. All the best for your, your nomination. Thank you so much for being with us. Thanks for having me.